What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna ah, damn it, I was talking too fast. We're gonna check out ten wrestling matches ruined by the referee. Now we have checked out a uh, uh, a video where you know special there was like cool special guest referees that kind of enhanced the feud and stuff like that. But we gotta check out some of these referees that didn't enhance the feud and either made the match worse or it didn't make sense how it ended or you know it could be like a a, a bot spot that they had to call legit or they didn't call like for example roman reigns versus kevin owens I believe it was a last man uh i think it was a last man standing match yeah it was a last man standing match and roman was you know handcuffed to like this structure but paul Heyman couldn't get the, the handcuffs unlocked in enough time so the referee stopped the tank out. It's like, bro, you, you have to keep going. You have to count. Technically, Kevin Owens should have won that match because he couldn't get to his feet in 10 in 10 seconds. So, well, for the 10 count. So, but he stopped it because it wasn't supposed to be the finish of the match. It, it kind of threw everything out the window. It was it was a crazy, it, it was a crazy segment. But ultimately, you know, it, you know, it, it wasn't the ref's fault, but yeah, it, it still looked bad. And you know, so we're gonna check this out. Appreciate all love and support. Let's get right into this one, man. He's the unsung heroes of wrestling. Referees can be the linchpin of so many great wrestling stories with heels cheating behind the referee's back, ref bumps allowing for more chaos, and down the line officiating allowing for wrestlers to adhere to or bend the rules depending on their alignment. Not to mention the work they do for the wrestlers too, keeping them to time and checking on them for injury as well. And if you're Bryce Remsburg, you can tell a whole match through physicality and don't even need the wrestlers. Excuse me, sorry. I was almost insinuating that Invisible Man and Invisible Stan weren't Ah, <sighs> bro, this nigga had the goggles so he can see them. This, I, this was... Uh... This is a real thing, bro. Invisible Man versus Invisible Stan, bro. And the ref is pretty much selling the hell out of this, bro. Real? That would be ludicrous. Unfortunately, though, referees have such an important role that when things go wrong, it can really take away from a match and mm -hmm. sometimes even ruin it entirely. And because we got nothing else on, I'm here to list 10 of those occasions. I'm Chopper P. Quinnell from Parts Fun Known, and these are 10 wrestling matches ruined by the referee. Before we dive into the list, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more wrestling lists and other great content like Survival Series, our trivia game, or Monday Night War, where Luke and I play each other at 2K22's MyGM mode. A bit of fun had by all. Number 10, Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch, WrestleMania 35. Admittedly, this is a controversial way to start because you could reasonably argue that the fault here was more with the wrestlers than the official, but mm -hmm. even if the referee Rod Zapata was only partly to blame, then he still deserves a place on this list simply because of how high profile the match was. The actual main event of actual WrestleMania, yeah. and not only that, but the historic first time ever that the biggest show of the year was headlined by a women's match. Yep. Up until this point, it had all gone pretty well. Ronda, Charlotte, and Becky had all worked hard and for over 20 minutes had put on a show worthy of their spot on the card. But then came the finish. Ronda had Becky on her shoulders looking for her Piper's Pit finisher, but Lynch suddenly countered into a crucifix pin. A cool spot in theory, but unfortunately, Rousey's shoulder was clearly several inches off the canvas mm -hmm. for the first half of the pin. In the heat of the moment, Zapata decided the best course of action was to count the fall as planned anyway bad move. Vince yeah. McMahon was reportedly furious afterwards and fined him for the error, which is Damn. sadly now the most remembered part of what was otherwise a landmark moment for Damn, WWE. Number nine, Hardcore Battle Royal, WrestleMania 2000. Another WrestleMania, another botched finish, and another question mark over who was most at fault. In the year 2000, the Hardcore title was defended under the same rules as the 24-7 championship in more recent times, except more fun in every way. Yeah. And Crash Holly had spent most of the past few months on the run, losing and regaining the championship in hotel rooms, airport terminals, amusement parks, and just about every other conceivable location. But for WrestleMania, he was set to defend the belt against 12 other men in a so-called battle royal. In fact, the match was a 15-minute brawl, during which the title could change hands numerous times via pinfall or submission, with whoever was champion when the clock expired getting to walk away victorious. So, anytime someone says the championship scramble match debuted at Unforgiven 2008, you show them this mess. As the clock ticked down, <laughs> Fresh was champion, but Taz had him locked in the Taz mission. What was supposed to happen next is that Hardcore Holly would smash Taz on the head with a glass jar, try to make the pin on crash, but the clock would expire after a count of two. What could possibly go wrong? As it turned out, plenty could. Hardcore Holly ended up on top of crash with five seconds to go rather than two, and referee Tim White started a count. One, two, 
and then just stopped. Crash didn't get his shoulder up and the bell didn't ring for another couple of seconds. So it looked like White had just decided not wow. to count. Hardcore Holly was eventually declared the winner, contrary to what was supposed to happen, but the debate rages on to this day as to whether the referee started counting too fast or if Hardcore Holly simply messed up his timing. Damn. Number eight, CM Punk versus Jack Swagger, Raw. We've kept this one low down on the list because to be fair, if you're going to have a botched finish, then this is the textbook example of how to cover it up well. CM Punk was WWE champion and was a couple of weeks away from a defense against Dolph Ziggler at the Royal Rumble, where Raw general manager and all around, oh, just a wonderful man, John Laurinaitis <laughs> would be the special guest referee. At the start of this non-title match on Raw, Big Johnny appeared on the stage to say that if Punk won, then both his opponent Jack Swagger and manager Vicky Guerrero would be barred from being in their pal Dolph's corner at the Rumble. The match got underway and after a few minutes, Punk hit the same Randy Savage style elbow drop from the top rope that he often hit during his matches. It rarely, mm -hmm. if ever, was used as a finisher, but here, for some reason, referee Jack Doan counted to three and called for the bell, despite Swagger kicking out. Punk what? looked a bit annoyed at the unexpected end to the match, but kept his cool and stared down Ziggler. While commentators Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler examined slow motion replays of the pin and analyzed the official's call in a very sports-like way. Cole even went as far as tying the error into the storyline, saying that avoiding mistakes like that was precisely why Laurinaitis had made himself the guest referee for the Rumble. Uh... It was so smooth it almost made it look like the cock-up was deliberate, but it yeah. definitely definitely wasn't number yeah, seven they, free for all they man. they played that really well <laughs> they they play they made a botch look like part of the storyline because yeah when once you have instant replay it's it's easy to kind of just spot out like okay well you know the replay shows this person kicked out, you know what I'm saying? Match Survivor Series 96. As we've just seen, not every referee botch has a major impact on the outcome of a match, but sometimes it can change the trajectory of an entire career. On the 1996 Survivor Series Free For All, the kickoff show before the main pay-per-view, a young JBL was about to start a big singles push as a cowboy character called Justin Hawk Bradshaw, and he was due to be victorious in a traditional really? four versus four elimination match. According to JBL, this was one of the first nights that the officials were wearing a new earpiece and referee Tim White was distracted by listening to someone in his ear when Jesse James, the future road dog, covered Bradshaw for what was meant to be a near fall. Instead, White counted to three, ignoring the kick out before oh. immediately realizing his mistake. White apparently said, oh my God, kid, I'm so sorry, but the decision had been seen by everyone, oh. so Bradshaw was sent to the back where he was given an ear fall by agent Jerry Briscoe. With the Damn. match's planned winner now gone, the ending had to be improvised, so eventually Bart Gunn from the opposing team pinned his on screen brother Billy to become the sole survivor, completely contrary to what was in the script. As for Justin Hawk Bradshaw, his new gimmick came to nothing after this full start, and he was soon repackaged, but I Damn. guess he did away for himself in the end. I Number mean, it, I guess it kind of worked out, but that's crazy. He had to be repackaged because of that. Damn. Wow, bro. That's it's, it's crazy how certain things happen in wrestling that can ultimately benefit you in the long run. Six, Trent Barretta versus Pac, AEW Dynamite. The autumn of 2019 was a crucial time for All Elite Wrestling as it launched its weekly Wednesday night show, Dynamite, and attempted to prove to the wrestling viewing public that it was a viable alternative to WWE. It was therefore quite important that the first few weeks of the show went off without a hitch, or at least without a major botch at the finish of a match. Yeah. Well, as the Rolling Stones will tell you, you can't always get what you want. On the November 6th edition of Dynamite, just the sixth episode in the the show's history, Trent and Pac were going one-on-one -on -one in a match intended to showcase the latter ahead of a pay-per-view match three days later against Hangman Adam Page. For the planned ending, Pac was due to hit his spectacular Black Arrow finisher from the top rope and get a clean 1-2-3. He hit the move perfectly, went for the cover, and referee Bryce Remsburg stopped counting after two. Ever the professional, Pac immediately transitioned into the Brutalizer submission and won the match that way. He looked visibly annoyed afterwards, although to be fair, looking visibly annoyed is kind of a permanent state for the man uh -huh. that gravity forgot, but it was an unfortunate error to say the least. Remsburg later explained that there had been some kind of miscommunication and he didn't realize that the black arrow was supposed to be the finish. He apologized oh. backstage for his mistake and everyone moved on. Number five, Damn. Mickey James versus Asuka. On Raw, having only just returned from a torn ACL that kept her on the shelf for over a year, Mickey was obviously eager to get back to business and had a chance to showcase her skills in a Raw Women's Championship match against Asuka, the same opponent she'd faced for the NXT Women's title in her first match back with WWE mm, in 2016 that. after several years away. While it's unlikely that she was due to win the match, everyone involved would have liked it to go better than it eventually did. In fairness to referee Derek Moore, it seems that he was just trying to protect Mickey after suspecting for some reason in the middle of the match that she was legitimately 
injured, but it looked really bad. The two women were on the mat with the champion trying to cinch in the Asker lock when, seemingly at random, the referee called for the bell. Mickey looked wide-eyed in disbelief for a couple of seconds before closing her eyes, seemingly trying to go with the flow by pretending she'd passed out. After a few seconds where literally everyone seemed baffled, Moore told the ring announcer that Mickey had been unable to continue. The following week in an interview with TalkSport, the veteran star seemed philosophical about the whole thing, saying, the refs do their job and kind of their job is to protect us and make sure it never goes too far or no one ever gets hurt. So he made his decision based on what he thought was a reality, that I was hurt or I couldn't continue and that's unfortunate for me. Number four, oh, wow. Gangrel versus Ed. And she, she kind of played into it. She didn't bury him or nothing like that. <laughs> she just kind of played right into it. Like, yeah, it's the ref's job to make sure, you know, the wrestlers are, you know, protected. Pack, Royal Rumble 99. There are a number of things you can do in the aftermath of a botch. One is to improvise and change the match on the fly based on what has just happened. Another is to try and style it out and hope the audience think it was all part of the show. Then there's a third option, known as the Teddy Long Technique, whereby <laughs> you continue as if nothing happened and literally don't give a f that everyone is furious at you. Back in 1999, when Teddy was still a referee rather than a general manager we all came to know and love, he was refereeing a European title defense by X Pack and Gangrel at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Partway through the match, X-Pac hit a top rope crossbody, but with momentum, Gangrel rolled through and had the champion's shoulders pinned. At that point, for reasons known only to himself, Long's hand clearly hit the canvas three times despite an obvious kick out from X-Pac. Needless to say, this wasn't the finish, so Long just got up, didn't even hold up two fingers to indicate a two count, and continued as if nothing happened. The what crowd the started booing the blatant mistake, and best of all, Teddy can even be seen removing his earpiece seconds later. Oh. Presumably to spare himself from an ongoing verbal assault from the <laughs> Just go ahead and just go ahead and take this out. <laughs> I can see this. What the hell, Teddy? God damn it. What the hell is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? Teddy, don't you take that earpiece out. Teddy, you keep that. That's funny, bro. <laughs> McMahon. X Pac won less than a minute later with the X Factor and long headed backstage to face his boss's wrath. Back. Number three Earl Hebner <laughs> versus Nick Patrick Invasion 2001. Now, look, nothing actually went wrong in this one, but its mere existence as a match on a major pay per view is enough thing. to give it a high ranking. Because in this match, the referees were the actual competitors. It was during the ill fated invasion oh, angle man. of 2001 this is a real thing, that the bro. alliance of WCW and ECW tried to take over the WWF. As we know, Vince and Co. didn't actually take on most of the big money contracts for WCW stars when they acquired the company in March that year, but they did bring over some talent. They didn't need Goldberg, they didn't need Nash, Paul or Hogan, they needed Nick Patrick. On a pay-per-view built around WWF doing battle against the Alliance, someone deemed it a good idea to even have the referees square off. So yep. Patrick, flanked by other WCW refs, took on senior WWF official Earl this is Hebner, a real thing, who was accompanied by the WWF Zebra crew. At one point during this mercifully brief battle, <laughs> it even looked like the two sides were going to come to blows, a bit like when the different news crews go to war with each other in Anchorman. Luckily for everyone's eyes, that didn't happen. Mick Foley, who was guest referee for the match because because, well, all the normal referees were already busy, eventually ejected the WCW refs from ringside. Patrick argued the point with him, then turned around and walked into a running shoulder tackle from Hebner, whose fighting style throughout the match could be best compared to a balding scrappy do. It was over, <laughs> never to be spoken about again, Thanks. until we did just now. But I'll be damned if this wasn't a home run sports entertainment segment though. I don't <laughs> care it's number three on the list of the things that referees ruined. I love this match and it's so good. Go watch it. Number two, The Rock versus Kurt Angle. No Way Out 2001. Whenever you see Dwayne Johnson, you get the distinct impression that he doesn't anger easily. That easygoing attitude, the million dollar smile, the bulging biceps. <sighs> Sorry, where was I? Yeah, ah, yes. Yeah, so it turns <laughs> out that back in 2001, there was at least one way to piss off the people's champion, as referee Earl Hebner found out that in the main event of No Way Out, Rocky was supposed to pin Kurt Angle, regaining the WWF title and setting him up for a showdown with Stone Cold at WrestleMania X7. The planned finish was for Rock to win after hitting the second rock bottom of the match. Simple, right? Wrong! As mm. the Great One hit the decisive move, poor old Earl forgot the move had already been hit earlier in the match, and so, knowing that he had to wait for a second time, stopped his count after two, even though Angle 
didn't kick out. Fuming, Rock picked up Angle, hit yet another rock right <laughs> button, made the cover, and yelled at Hebner, yep. count the motherfucking finish. Yep. Angle remembered on his podcast years <laughs> later that Rock had cooled off by the time they all got backstage and didn't yell at Earl afterwards. But still, at that moment inside the ring, he made absolutely sure that Hebner knew his role and shut his mouth. And number one, Hulk Hogan versus Sting, Starcade 97. Yeah, this one's definitely the worst. And here's why. It took place at the critical point of the main event on the highest grossing WCW pay-per-view of all time. It was also the first major angle in the company for Bret Hitman Hart, the most talked about star in the industry following an incident in Montreal that you might have heard about. Mm -hmm. So it's the sort of moment you want to get right. And referee Nick Patrick had literally one job. <laughs> Here was the plan. Bad boy world champion Hollywood Hogan would go for a pin on challenger Sting and Patrick would deliver a fast count to help Hogan cheat his way to victory. Then Brett would come out, heroically say that he wouldn't stand by and see anyone else get screwed like he did and forcefully take over officiating duties. The match would restart, Sting would win by submission and the good guys live happily ever after. What actually happened was that Patrick counted at a perfectly reasonable speed. So when Brett intervened, it looked like Hogan was the one being robbed of a perfectly mm. legitimate victory. Patrick later said that Hogan had told him to count at normal speed, while Sting told him to count fast, and no one in management would give him a clear answer about which oh, was right. So shit. was there political chicanery involved? Quite possibly, but however it came about, this was a truly spectacular mess. And that's all. Wow. Are there any so damn, he didn't know who to, who to listen to. He was like counting normal speed. Hulk is telling you counting normal speed. Things like counting fast speed. Damn, it seemed like there was some definitely some political moves going on here to try to make Hulk Hogan look like a sympathetic character. I don't know, but that's just an interesting uh, situation all into itself. So, but comment down below. Let me know what are some other matches that you guys can think of that was ruined by the referee. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel, man. Uh, Road to 150K. And I am still your unspeeded YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.